let's continue our exploration of the Django introduction tutorial. So we're going to continue building the poll application and we're going to focus on creating the public interface and that is known as views in Django. We've already seen a little bit about this but we're going to dive into it further in the next set of videos. Before we do so, if you want to support our channel, check out this coffee page that we have below the video and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And let's get started. So what we have at the moment is this polls page here. You can see it says, hello world, you're at the polls index, but this is not very useful. We need something a bit more useful, I would say, for a polls application. This should actually show a list of the most recent polls that have been created in the application. Now let's go back to the Django documentation and let's go to this overview here. So a view is a type of web page in your Django application that generally serves as a specific function and has a specific HTML template. So for example, if you were writing a blog application, you might have the following views, a homepage that would display the latest blog entries, and you might also have an entry detail page, and that is a page for a single blog entry. Those are commonly known as detail pages, and you also might have different pages for things like the year, the month, and the day, and so on. Each of these will correspond to a Django view function. Now in the poll application, we're gonna have these four views here. We're gonna have a question index page that's gonna display the latest questions. We'll also have a question detail page that's gonna display a single questions text. And it's not gonna show you the results, but it's gonna give you a form with which you can then vote for the options that are associated with the question. And then we are going to have a question results page that's gonna display the results for a particular question. And we'll also have a vote action that is gonna handle voting for a particular choice in a particular question. So we're gonna build these out over the next set of videos. But the core takeaway is that in Django, web pages and other content are delivered by views. These are similar to controllers and other frameworks such as Laravel and Ruby on Rails. And in Django, a view is represented by a Python function or if you have a class-based view, it will be represented by a method in the class. And we already saw how to build URL patterns when we added this index view here. So we have a urls.py, and then we define a list of URL patterns using the path function in Django. And this maps a URL segment to a view in your Django application. And the view that we wrote so far was this index view here that returns a simple HTTP response containing some content. So we're now going to write some more views in this Django app for the views that we saw above. So let's just copy these for now and we're going to go back to views.py and we're going to paste these in here. So we have four functions now. This one called detail has been added and one for the results of the poll and also a vote function as well. Now at the moment, these view functions don't actually do anything because they're not associated with a URL in the Django application. So let's go to urls.py. We only have a single path here, but for the four view functions that we have, we need to have four URL paths. So let's go to the documentation again, and we're gonna copy this code once again. So I'm gonna copy all of the code that we have in this URL patterns list here, and we can paste that into the URL patterns, and we're gonna have a look at these now. Now we already defined this earlier on, that was the one that maps the index view that we can see on this page here, that returns the HTTP response. We now have three new ones. We have the path for the detail page. So that links to views.detail and notice this URL segment that we have here. This is surrounded by angle brackets and that captures a segment of the URL. In this case, we have a segment that is of data type integer and it is called question ID. That is a name you can give to the segment. You can call it anything you want. And you can see the example here that is gonna match slash polls slash five, or indeed any number here. So if we added any number after this slash, that is gonna match that because it's expecting any kind of integer. Now, if we look at the detail view that we have here, let's go to views.py and look at the detail view. This is a function similar to index above that takes the request, but it also takes the question ID that's been captured from the URL. And those captured angle bracket parameters are then passed into the associated view. You can see it here, it's got the same name, called question ID that was defined here inside this angle bracket statement. So the question ID in this case 5535 is then going to be passed into the Django view function. And you can then use that, for example, to look up objects in the database and so on. So we have this question ID and we're returning an HTTP response. And that tells us that we're looking at a question with that ID. So let's test that out just now. If we go back to our application slash polls, and we're gonna add the number 10 here or indeed I added 19 by accident. So it says here we are now looking at question 19. 
And if I correct that mistake and add 10 here, we get the same response. So no matter what number we add here, it's gonna give us back that number in the HTML that's been returned from the Django view. So I hope that makes sense. This is an important concept in Django. If you have a URL for a detail page and you need to have an identifier in that URL, for example, in this case, the question ID, you can capture that with these angle brackets inside the URL pattern. And whatever you call the captured parameter is then passed into the Django view function, as you can see here. And we have something similar for the results view. You can see a question ID is inside the parameters here. And if we look at this, you can see we have the same angle brackets. We have the question ID, and then we have an other, another part of the URL after that, slash results. So what that means is if we go back to the application and we add slash results to this, we get the results page for this given question. So if I change that to question ID one, again, that is a dynamically updated parameter that's captured from the URL. And that is very useful for looking up objects in the database and getting detailed pages. And if we look at the final URL that was defined here, again, we capture the question ID and it's slash vote. And if we go to views.py, it's a very simple HTTP response. So the same kind of content as we had above. And that demonstrates how we can take a parameter captured in the URL and then pass that into the view where we can then use that in the processing of the request and the returning of the response. Now, what we're gonna look at next is we're actually going to write a view that does something useful. So if we look at what we have at the moment, we're just returning these HTTP responses that contain bits of text here, as you can see, but it's not particularly useful. If we look at the application here, you wouldn't be too excited about visiting this page here and seeing this content. It's not the most enthralling website. It's not something I would be too excited about visiting. I think we need something a bit more useful and that's what we're going to work towards in the next video. So I'm gonna keep this short because frankly, I'm very busy with work and life at the moment but we're gonna have more of these videos very soon. And we're gonna look at the next part of this where we actually write a view that does something useful. For example, looking up objects in a database. So thanks again for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page here and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And if you're finding this content useful, consider becoming a channel member. Thanks a lot to everybody that's joined so far, greatly appreciated. And we'll see you all in the next video.